I'm Ma Hussein Gambles. I work as a project manager for a, a large pharmaceutical company at the moment. But before then, I had a skincare company and also a certification company that I set up. And prior to that, I used to work at the University of Leeds as a social scientist, and that's where I did my PhD. And prior to that, I used to work for a large pharmaceutical company in the north of England, uh, developing lots of different formulations like tablets, capsules, injectables. I was born in Pakistan, in Islamabad, and I was brought up by my grandparents, maternal grandparents, and, uh, and an orderly who used to follow my brother and I around. I had a fairly interesting childhood. I was a bit of a tomboy. Um, wasn't into dolls, but more into climbing trees and playing baseball and cricket and riding bikes. And um, I was into science fiction. My favorite TV program was Star Trek. And I remember doing lots of role plays with my little brother and, and other little neighborhood boys. We had this, uh, this neighbor boy and he, he was slightly oriental looking, so he made the perfect Mr. Spock. I just uh, got, I remember getting some, my mum's eyeliner and drawing his eyebrows on. And um, my brother was Bones and I was um, Captain Kirk, of course. And we had this uh, remote control car, my favorite remote control car. And we used the receivers, uh, the controls for that as receivers uh, for Mr. Spock and, and Captain Kirk. I feel a bit like a citizen of the world, um, having uh, of being of Afghan origin and then going to school in Pakistan in primary school. That was an interesting experience. I, I, did, I spoke Urdu with a very different accent, so I used to get laughed at and picked at at school and being called a foreigner. And then uh, when I moved to England, again, same story. Um, we used to get picked on sometimes for having a different accent, not being able to speak English with a the Yorkshire accent. So it's. Um, it's been an interesting experience, experiencing, I suppose you could call it racism in a way, but from both sides of the, the world. So I always felt as if um, I didn't belong, and I suppose my way of um, making sense of that was to, at school, hanging around with, um, with bikers and rockers and people with motor... I had my first motorbike when I was, um, when I was still at school, about 16, and had a a biker's jacket and biker boots and used to listen to rock music and that kind of carried on into university. When I went to university I had this identity of a, a biker chick and uh, made friends quite easily with, with the local sort of crowd and I always felt safe, safe with that crowd, maybe because they were marginalised and I felt I could relate to that group. I did my degree in pharmacology at Sunderland University and we had about roughly 50% girls and boys on the course. But it was quite a, a shock when I actually went out to industry and my first job was as a polyurethane chemist and I was the only female there. And then after that, the pharmaceutical company, which was like a proper GMP environment, I worked in there making tablets. And, and again, I was the only female in the, the whole sort of product development uh, department. And um, I just having, remember having a hoot of a time with all my male colleagues and and uh, I remember once getting in this machine, a big granulator to clean it from the inside because I was the smallest person there. So uh, then I moved on to academia and uh, that was in Leeds University and it was very different because I was used to hardcore science and then I moved into a qualitative research of softer science and where you interview people and uh, it allowed me to write papers. I've written about 10 papers, nine of those as first author and I got them published in really good journals including the BMJ. And the, the findings of my PhD, they, they, they were changed into public health policy. So that was great. I felt as if I really made a difference, not just personally, but also to, to the society. And then um, I felt pregnant uh, with twins. And um, the girls were premature. They're fine now. They were six weeks premature. And it was decision time. You know, I can't really put them in a crash because the university salaries aren't that good. or weren't that good at the time. So I decided to start a business from home so I could spend time with them and I thought I'd use my skills from my pharmaceutical development days and started to make creams in my kitchen. And it was just a, a matter of using my scientific experience and analytical mind to put those together and make something that was fun but it turned out, just happened to turn out into something that could make me earn me a living while I looked after my children. 
Initially, the cream making, um, I was giving these away as, as, you know, just as Christmas gifts or, or birthday presents or if somebody needed it just a, as a free freebie. But it reached a point where I couldn't really, you know, they were quite expensive and I had to start charging money because I was getting emails from around the world asking for these creams. And at that point, I went to see an accountant and decided to set a business up as a limited company so I could charge money and um, and buy you know, get lo borrow some money from the bank so I can pay and 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 basically make the whole thing more professional and and commercial. By the time I sold the business, it was exporting to fourteen countries, and um, the brand was called Saf Skincare. And um, the the unique selling points was it was totally preservative free because it was all oils and I used beeswax as a base. So it was oil uh, preservative free. It was free from all nasty chemicals and it was organic certified, vegetarian, cruelty free certified, and halal certified. I personally found science to be a lot of fun. Whatever I've done, whatever I've applied science to in my life, it's it's about exploration. It's like about being like. Captain Kirk, but instead of exploring different planets, there's so much to explore here on, you know, on Earth. And that's the fascinating thing about science. And you can apply it to cooking, to makeup, to, to everything, you know, to cleaning, jewelry, your house. And the fact that it gives you tools to do so many different things and so many different aspects of science, um, as reflected by my own sort of personal career, it's great fun. Uh, if I was born again, I'd be a scientist all over again.